Welcome back, and this is part two of Because of Winn-Dixie. Chapter four. One, said the preacher. We were sitting on the couch, and Winn-Dixie was sitting between us. Winn-Dixie had already decided that he liked the couch a lot. One, the preacher said again. Winn-Dixie looked at him kind of hard. Your mama was funny. She could make just about anybody laugh. Two, he said. He had red hair with freckles. Just like me, I said. Just like you, the preacher nodded. Three, she liked to plant things. She had a talent for it. She could stick a tire in the ground and grow a car. When Dixie started chewing on his paw, and I tapped him on the head to make him stop. Four, said the preacher. She could run fast. If you were racing her, you couldn't ever let her get a head start because she would beat you for sure. I'm that way too, I said. Back home in Watley, I raced Liam Fullerton and beat him, and he said it wasn't fair because boys and girls shouldn't race each other to begin with. I told him he was just a sore loser. The preacher nodded. He was quiet for a minute. I'm ready for number five, I told him. Five, he said. She couldn't cook. She burned everything, including water. She had a hard time opening a can of beans. She couldn't make head or tail of a piece of meat. Six. The preacher rubbed his nose and looked up at the ceiling. When Dixie looked up too. Number six is that your mama loved a story. She would sit and listen to stories all day long. She loved to be told a story. She especially liked funny ones, stories that made her laugh. The preacher nodded his head like he was agreeing with himself. What's number seven, I asked. Let's see, he said. She knew all the constellations, every planet in the nighttime sky, every last one of them. She could name them and point them out, and she never got tired of looking up at them. Number eight, the preacher said, with his eyes closed, was that she hated being the preacher's wife. She said she just couldn't stand having the ladies at church judge what she was wearing or what she was cooking and how she was singing. She said it made her feel like a bug under a microscope. When Dixie lay down on the couch, he put his nose in the preacher's lap and his tail in mine. Ten, said the preacher. Nine, I told him. Nine, said the preacher. She drank. She drank beer and whiskey and wine. Sometimes she couldn't stop drinking, and that made me and your mama fight quite a bit. Number ten, he said with a long sigh. Number ten is that your mama loved you. She loved you very much. But she left me, I told him. She left us, said the preacher softly. I could see him pulling his old turtle head back into his stupid turtle shell. She packed her bags and left us, and she didn't leave one thing behind. Okay, I said. I got up off the couch when Dixie hopped off too. Thank you for telling me, I said. I went right back to my room and wrote down all ten things that the preacher had told me. I wrote them down just the way he said them to me, so that I wouldn't forget them. And then I read them out loud to Winn-Dixie until I had them memorized. I wanted to know those ten things inside and out. That way, if Mama ever came back, I could recognize her. And I would be able to grab her and hold on to her tight and not let her get away from me again. Chapter 5 Winn-Dixie couldn't stand to be left alone. We found that out real quick. If me and the preacher went off and left him by himself in the trailer... He pulled all the cushions off the couch and all the toilet paper off the roll, so we started trying tying him up outside with a rope when we left. That didn't work either. When Dixie howled until Samuel and Miss Detweiler's dog started howling too, it was exactly the kind of noise that people in an all-adult trailer park would not like to hear. He just doesn't want to be left alone, I told the preacher. That's all. Let's take him with us. I could understand the way when Dixie felt. Getting left behind probably made his heart feel empty. After a while, the preacher gave in, and everywhere we went, we took Winn-Dixie, even to church. The Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi isn't a regular-looking church. The building used to be a pick-a-quick store, and when you walk in the front door, the first thing you see is the pick-a-quick motto. It's written on the floor inside in tiny red tiles that make great big letters that say, Pick, 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 quick, quick, quick. The preacher tried painting over those tiles, but the letters won't stay covered up. And so the preacher had just given up and let them be them. The other thing about the open arms is that different from other churches is that there aren't any pews. People bring their own fold-up chairs and lawn chairs, 
And so sometimes it looks more like a congregation is watching a parade or sitting on a barbecue instead of being at church. It's kind of a strange church, I thought, when Dixie would fit right in. But the first time we brought Win Dixie to open arms, the preacher tied him outside the front door. Why did we bring him all the way here just to tie him up? I asked the preacher. Because dogs don't belong in church, Opal, the preacher said. That's why. He tied Win Dixie up to a tree and said there was lots of shade for him and that ought to work out real good. Well, it didn't. The service started and there was some singing and some sharing and some praying. And then the preacher started preaching. And he wasn't but two or three words into the sermon when there was a terrible howl coming outside. The preacher tried to ignore it. Today, he said, Oh, said Win Dixie. Please, said the preacher. Oh, said Win Dixie back. Friends, said the preacher. Erp, wailed Win Dixie. Everyone turned in their lawn chairs and folded up chairs and looked at one another. Opal, said the preacher. Oh, said Win Dixie. Yes, sir, I said. Go get that dog, he yelled. Yes, sir, I yelled back. I went outside and untied Win Dixie and brought him inside. And he sat down beside me and smiled about the preacher. And the preacher wouldn't help it. He smiled back. Win Dixie had that effect on him. And so the preacher started in and preaching again. Win Dixie sat there listening to it, waggling his tail and ears the way this way and that, trying to catch all the words. And everything would have been all right, except that a mouse ran across the floor. The open arms had mice. They were there from when it was a picket quick, and there were lots of good things to eat in the building. And when the picket quick became Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi, the mice stayed around to eat all the leftover crumbs from the potluck suppers. The preacher kept on saying he was going to have to do something about them, but he never did. Because the truth is, he couldn't stand the thought of hurting anything, even a mouse. Well, when Dixie saw that mouse and he was up and after him, one minute everything was quiet and serious and the preacher was going on and on and on. And the next minute Win dixie looked like a furry bullet shooting across the building chasing that mouse. He was barking at his feet were skittering all over the polished pick a quick floor. And people were clapping and hollering and pointing. They really went wild when dixie actually caught the mouse. I have never in my life seen a dog catch a mouse, said Mrs. Norderly. She was sitting next to me. He's a special dog, I told her. I imagine so, she said back. When Dixie stood up there in the front of the whole church, wagging his tail and holding the mouse real careful in his mouth, holding on to him tight but not squishing him. I believe that mutt has got some retriever in him, said somebody behind me. That's a hunting dog. When Dixie took the mouse over to the preacher and dropped it at its feet, and when the mouse tried to get away, when Dixie put his paw right on the mouse's tail. Then he smiled up at the preacher. He showed him all his teeth. The preacher looked down at the mouse. He looked at Win Dixie. He looked at me. He rubbed his nose. It got real quiet in the picket quick. Let us pray, the preacher finally said, for this mouse. And everybody started laughing and clapping. The preacher picked up the mouse by the tail and walked and threw it out the front door of the picket quick. And everybody applauded again. Then he came back and we all prayed together. I prayed for my mama. I told God how much she would have enjoyed hearing the story of when Dixie catching that mouse. It would have made her laugh. I asked God if maybe I could be one, be the one to tell her that story someday. And then I talked to God about how I was lonely in Naomi because I didn't know that many kids, only the ones from church, and there weren't that many kids at the open arms. Just Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry, two brothers who weren't twins but looked like they were, and Amanda Wilkinson whose face was always pinched up like she was smelling something real bad. And Sweetie Pie Thomas, who was only five years old and still mostly a baby. And none of them wanted to be my friend anyway because they probably thought I'd tell them on the preacher, tell on them to the preacher for every little thing that they did wrong. And then they would get in trouble with God and their parents. So I told God that I was lonely, even having Win Dixie. And finally, I prayed for the mouse. Like the preacher suggested, I prayed that he didn't get hurt when he went flying out the door of Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. I prayed that he landed on a nice soft piece of grass. Chapter 6 I spent a lot of time that summer in the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library sounds like it would be a big fancy place, but it's not. It's just a little old house full of books with Miss Granny Block is in charge of all of them. She is very small, a very old woman with short gray hair, 
and she was the first friend I made in Naomi. Uh, it all started with Win dixie not liking it when I went into the library because he couldn't go inside too. But I showed him how he could stand up on his hind legs and look in the window and see me in there, selecting my books, and he was okay, as long as he could see me. But the thing was, the first time Miss Granny Block saw Win dixie standing on his hind legs that like that, looking in the window, she didn't think he was a dog. She thought he was a bear. This is what happened. I was picking out my books and kind of humming to myself. And all of a sudden, there was this loud, scary scream. I went running up to the front of the library, and there was Miss Franny Block sitting on the floor behind her desk. Miss Franny, I said, are you all right? A bear, she said. A bear? He has come back, she said. He has? I asked. Where is he? Out there, she said, and raised a finger and pointed at Winn-Dixie, standing on his hind legs, looking in the window at for me. Miss Franny Block, I said, that's not a bear. That's a dog. That's my dog, Winn-Dixie. Are you positive? She said, yes, ma'am. I told her, I'm positive. He's my dog. I wouldn't know him, or excuse me, I would know him anywhere. Miss Franny sat there trembling and shaking. Come on, I said, let me help you up. It's okay. I stuck out my hand and Miss Franny took hold of it and I pulled her up off the floor. She didn't weigh hardly anything at all. When she was standing on her feet, she started acting all embarrassed, saying how I must think she was a silly old lady, mistaking a dog for a bear but that she had a bad experience with a bear coming into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library a long time ago, and she had never quite gotten over it. When did that happen? I asked her. Well, said Miss Franny, it is a very long story. That's okay, I told her. I am like my mama in that I like to be told stories. But before you start telling it, can Winn Dixie come in and listen too? He gets lonely without me. Well, I don't know, said Miss Franny. Dogs are not allowed in the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. He'll be good, I told her. He's a dog who goes to church. And before she could say yes or no, I went outside and got Win dixie And he came in and lay down with a humph and a sigh right at Mrs. Franny's feet. She looked down at him and said, he most certainly is a large dog. Yes, ma'am, I told her. He has a large heart, too. Well, Miss Franny said she bent over and gave Win dixie a pat on the head and Win dixie wagged his tail back and forth sniffing his nose on the little lady's feet. Let me get a chair and sit down so I can tell the story properly. Thank you for joining me for part two of Because of Winn-Dixie.